In a state dominated by breweries, a handful of people are pressing their way to success. Hard cider is growing in popularity across the country, and some are looking to cash in on a drink that's less familiar to beer-loving Wisconsinites. Our Danica Lewis is here with what's happening. Yeah, and it's pretty exciting stuff. It's becoming increasingly clear, actually, that there's a market for something a little different than a microbrew, right? National sales support that, if you look at the numbers. But when it's not the tried and true, it can be tough to sell. So I asked those people, why even take the risk? Turns out success is as sweet as cider. We went through about 68,000 pounds of apples last year. <laughs> and we're just a small cider. Our equipment small, but it gets the job done. First impressions can be hard to change, even. They have in their mind that they don't like cider. When it's hard, cider. Even though it's gotten a lot better since then. Joseph Baird blames the big brewers for leaving a bad taste in the mouths of so many drinkers. So when people actually try something real, they're shocked that cider can even taste that good. That's what we're here for. <laughs> when Baird didn't see enough quality cider in stores. I actually was shocked that I was one of the first people to actually start doing this around here. He started pulping and pressing, now making Mershons at a Stoughton business park. His secret? Simplicity. They didn't have apple juice concentrate and added flavors when they started doing this. Just this juice and honey. It's just a huge taste difference when you actually make it the way it should be made. Johnny Appleseed is perceived wrongly because all he cared about is getting trees to make cider with. That's all Jim Lindemann cares about on his two-acre orchard. Boy, Grandma had an apple tree on the east side of Madison near the uh, Piahara River and... Uh, I used to climb that, and I've had an affinity for apples ever since. When there was no money in juice, Lindemann turned to cider, working out of a modest garage space, even experimenting in his own kitchen. He named the operation Cider House of Wisconsin. I think the major driving force is people are looking for something different. Even with a market, Lindemann quickly realized growing, pressing, and processing your own apples slows down production, while beer continues to bottle in bulk. No one cider maker in this state is big enough to stand alone, I don't think. Lindemann says cideries in the state need to collaborate in order to compete. It's, it's that uh, collective effort that really makes something grow. Looked on... Uh... Craigslist and found um, old retired Wisconsin dairy tanks. Turning antique farm equipment into fermentation tanks. Give them new life. Wasn't the restoration Paul Asper is referring to in the name. I would hate to see us lose those natural resources. In fact, 5% of cider sales go toward stream restoration, a passion of this fly fisherman turned cider maker. It's part of our American tradition that we've lost a long time ago. And tradition tastes really good, something Asper's wife and co-founder, Lissa Coop, says sticks once they convince bars and customers to actually give it a chance. It's people who probably are beer connoisseurs and they're seeing yeah. like, hey, there's this whole world of cider out there for me. So I think that if, if we can be convinced that cider is worth trying, then so can a lot of people. We just need to get the word out. A lot of times you don't want to take a chance on something that might not work. But in a place where beer is the tried and true. We're standing up to some of these bigger microbreweries as, as far as sales are concerned. You don't need a good first impression to have the final say on cider. But we know how to make good cider, and that's what matters. Can't be more true than that. One of the major challenges facing these cideries, though, no tasting room. Both Mershons and Restoration say they are working on having some sort of storefront. Lindemann with House of Cider says that could be another potential benefit of collaboration, having a tasting room for all sorts of hard ciders instead of each individual cidery having to pay their own way. Regardless, yeah, yeah it really is. And regardless, there's a market to grow into. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we have fun at Live at Four, right? <laughs> I brought a little, this is the Mershons, okay? So this is their typical one. And Thank I tell you. you what, I was telling Susan um, about the story from there. He just put a cup underneath of that presser and it was some of the most m amazing apple juice I've ever tasted in my life. It didn't even need to be fermented, but a little fermentation Cheers. never, never Cheers hurts, right? to their success. <laughs> yes, yes. Cheers. Yeah, so go out. I mean, it, there's some great people doing great things out there and really different stuff. It's really good. Well, that's a very interesting it's taste. It's crisp, right? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, that's the thing again, they <laughs> 
they keep saying over and over again, these breweries kind of messed us up. We, they, they tripped us up because everybody thinks they're going to sip into something and it's going to be this sweetness. Right. And then oh, this there is you very, go. Can we just get a shot of their label? I think they, yeah, uh, I think they got a couple the of them. The label on their bottle is so pretty. I very think they good. got a couple oh, they of them. Did. Yeah. Okay, good. So yep. we got a chance yeah, to see gorgeous. it. Yeah, gorgeous. Good. Mm, okay. Good stuff. The rest of the show is going to be fun now. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we can leave the bottles here. <laughs> okay, I will. I will.